if I was a newer reefer, I would want to listen to this conversation. This podcast is designed to be what it's like on the third night of a trade show when everyone's tired, possibly a little bit tipsy, hanging out very late at night, talking smack, which means there's bad language. So if you don't like that, this isn't for you. If, uh, if your kids are in the room while you're listening, that's your damn problem, not ours. Welcome to Reef Beat. Tonight on Reef Beef, we talk with a real live beefer. Rich is here, and we're going to talk about some issues he's been having with his tank. And uh, it's got to do with, we touch on testing, we, talk, we touch on uh, number chasing, and we talk about leaving stuff alone for a while. This is a great thing that's happening in real time, so we're really excited to have Rich here. This episode brought to you by saltwatercream.com and Polyp, powered by Polyp Lab. Yeah, so let's get to the goddamn show. <laughs> Rich, thank you for, uh, for supporting us. And, yeah, uh, man. We've been looking forward to chatting with you. What uh, what can we chat about? What's going on? <laughs> I can't get this damn tank to cooperate. Mm. It, I just um, throw it out the window. No, if we I could, read I would. I, sometimes I, that's what I want to do. We we read your emails, but that doesn't help us at all. So just tell I, us what's tell us what's <laughs> going on, and we'll see if we can help. So I started it with um, I had a seventy five gallon before it, so I took the uh, rock that was in that in that tank, moved it to this tank. Okay. Um, had that going, started with two part and it was fine for a while. And then the alkalinity kept dropping as the alkalinity kept dropping. I was like, all right. So I bumped up the alkalinity and tried to keep the calcium together and so forth. And it just would keep dropping and keep dropping and keep dropping. I'm like, what the hell is going on? This tank does not need that, that much alkalinity. It's, it's not even close to being so, um, all right, you know, I'll switch to calc. So I switched to a calc reactor, put that. Um, that didn't, uh, still wasn't keeping up with, you know, wasn't keeping up with it. Hey, can I stop and you it, right there and ask you, what were you using to test it? I have a uh, water link. So, so water link pro, I, was, I use those. Okay. And um, it with gives that. me all, I'm sorry. I'm not even familiar with that. Can me you tell neither. me what that is? It's your butt. Whoa. Oh, that thing. Oh, like, yeah. what is it? A spectrophotometer or yeah. colorimeter? That's, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Huh. So that's what I was using. Okay. Um, did you ever, let me ask you, did you ever cross-reference it with another uh, kit? Hannah, with Hannah checkers. Okay. And it was reading the, similar-ish? The Hannah checker was reading about well the hand had does it in dkh this does it in ppms yeah so when you did the the equivalent it was coming out to about one dkh dkh off from each other okay yeah but consistent but the trend was similar trend was the same yeah huh so um so after doing with the calc i'm like all right well you know i i was having coralline growing Things were going, so I'm like, maybe it's just, you know, don't know enough about it. So I'll just keep, you know, keep giving it what it wants. So added two part again. So I was doing calc and two part. Well, that didn't end so good. And that's when it precipitated. Do you have a calc problem, which is easy to do? No. Um, I'm okay, not I'll sure. Let, yeah, no, it it if you if you do too much calc, you get a snowstorm. Yeah. So how were you doing calc? Through a calc reactor. Uh, what brand? Uh, a Vast Marine. Vast Marine. Oh, Vast Marine. Yeah, that's the one I use. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, the whole thing, even my uh, ML crabs became encrusted. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Yeah. Um, did water changes. We're doing that. Now, basically, fast forward, this was about, I'd say about four or five months ago. The, the magnesium will not, it'll go from 
1200 to 2000 drop down to 1400 up to 1600 and it's just all over so that so, sort of made me i remember that from your email that sort of made me feel like now this is just me grasping at straws but that felt like a test kit issue because i don't see how magnesium does that sort of movement uh, is what are you testing with not the aqua spin what is yours called aqua um, testing? something link the um the spin touch Spin touch. Isn't that what Michael Jackson did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Lamote. Yeah. Oh, that's a Lamote product? Yeah. Well, that's a good company. Yeah, I, it's, it's what my LFS was using. Saw that and I was like, all right, it does all seven in, in two minutes. You know, the only thing, um, phosphate doesn't really, you really got to test phosphate on its own to, if you want to get um you know under zero like yeah. point two or something like that you know, but otherwise it's it's fine i always um, think that's sort of sketchy that, when when you you know test some phosphate that low that people are trying to get to because it's it's just asking a lot of a test kit if i if it reads zero i think i'm you know what do i know here i'm the one that's having problems but if it's testing zero then it's below one should be all right. Yeah. Um, did you did the magnesium bounce? Um, when you test that, have you corroborated that with another test kit as well? And yeah. it does indeed seem to be bouncing. Mm -hmm. That's that's not weird. Possible. And that's what I don't. And it was almost in sync with the alkalinity. Huh. So, I mean, I I fried my return pump. Um, it was just calcified. Oh yeah, um, and all the other pumps as well. So basically, one by one, they were all just dropping. So I replaced all of those. The sand was just becoming yeah. rock. Yeah, man, this so, strikes a chord with me, Rich, because um, I do have a client that for a while, mostly my clients are hands off, but this guy was running his Trident and some stuff. And here recently, would we decided to just let me just be in total control? But he did this same thing, and it's insane. His uh, um his mechanical filter bags turned into rocks. Oh yeah. His, uh, you know, his substrate. Like I had, I was trying to break it up with a gravel vac and I ended up having to pull, it was his substrate, but they had turned into rocks and I was throwing them in the trash. I just, insane. yeah, I took them all out. Yeah. I was told if it, if that happens to get it out of there. So what I've been doing little by little is actually replacing the rock as well. So I don't know if that's, so I added more, took some out. Some of it was just, it was infested anyway. So I just took them all out. Not all of them, I mean, but some of them. Out. I mean, the confusing thing is to understand what's going on. Cause I, I can see alkalinity moving around for either things using alkalinity or you dumping too much in that um, for me, it doesn't make sense with magnesium. I mean, that's always a big number in it. I've always been told more or less that it moves slowly so for it to jump around like that i don't understand that well part. and that's like even like i like yesterday i did a test and my alkalinity uh, same time was at 146 the magnesium so wait can you at, convert that to either DK oh yeah i'm sorry or, yeah yeah sorry so 146 but Craig, Bateman, eight point one. Like, what is it? Eight point one. Okay. I mean, I'm a. <laughs> this sounds weird. Like this is total aquarium nerd stuff. But like, I'm an eight guy. Like I like <laughs> I like to stay in the eights. Like you know, anyone outside the aquarium industry wouldn't know what the hell I was talking about. But yeah. Like I like the eights. I guess the nines are cool. I just always felt like I always just try to hit the eights. But yeah, it's relatively stays between eight one and eight five. And so That's like, where it likes you know, to stay by itself. The way you have the camera, the, the tank looks sort of like, let's get a look at the tank. And it's really, your camera's really sucking in. Oh, I like your stand. Yeah, it's yeah. just um, a That's facade. Great. Yeah. That's the way yeah. to do it. Yeah, screw doors and hinges. There you go. So that's what I can move this. 
bring this up. Yeah, because it's really sucking up the, the lights. Yeah, I don't know. You want to see the sump or you want to? I'm more interested in the tank. Oh, LX yeah, yeah, the tank too. But yeah, I, I remember that. I don't remember what brand that is, that, that modular sump. Seamless sump. Yeah. Seamless. It's nice. That's, so very bright lights. What are the lights? Reef breeders. Oh, okay. A lot of light. Well, I, I have them up a little bit. I can usually by this time they're going blue and going dark. The um, the only thing that was, anytime I put an SPS, it'll bleach out or or just it goes. So I even thought the lights were too high. Brought the lights even down. My highest point is three hundred three no three twenty. Par. Yeah, the par a three twenty. So it's hard, you know, because of the, the washout from the lights, it's hard to get a good read. Am I seeing a lot of coralline algae all over the place? Yeah. I mean, you want me to put them blue? I can turn them blue. No, that's a, I, well, but that's you got, to got You got coralline like all over the back and all over the right. It's just, it's just purple as hell. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you have calcification going on. Mm hmm. I think. You know, and you know, I'm not an authority on this, but I think sometimes people can be surprised at the amount that coralline algae can suck out. Well, that's what I was trying to figure out was it just all right, just to give you an example on a two part, I was up to 330 mLs a day. Wow. There's it's, nothing in the tank. It's it's something's not right. Now I, I stopped all that. I left it probably about a week of not doing anything. Did water changes, water changes, water changes. Went back to two part, started at 50 and didn't touch it for another week. Right now I'm, I'm finally stopped at a hundred and it's maintaining where like I said, about eight, between eight one and eight five. Well, I would leave it Except there for, for the a magnesium. While. Magnesium keeps bouncing, and I don't understand why it bounces. So mag much. Magnesium can't bounce. That's got to be a testing artifact or a yeah. testing issue. Magnesium just okay. isn't that volatile. It just yeah. it it's just a isn't. slow mover. Um, it's a freight you know, liner. Unless, unless you're adding, I'm just looking at some of the the the, the info on on the tester. Um, You know, it's supposed to be 50 plus or minus uh, about a 15. point. Yeah, 0.8 dKH, which is a lot, but not too bad. But uh, that's its relative accuracy, whether it's, I, I mean, does that thing get calibrated at all? Yes, it's got a calibration you can, that you okay. put on it. And uh, do, you, do you calibrate the HANAs? I have not calibrated the hands. Okay, and and just for for just for um, what's it called when you say the truth? <laughs> for shit's sake! Just for the record, um, I don't like the hand okay. testers at all. Um, I don't either. Okay. So they they all make right. they make me uh, they make me nervous. I used to love them, and I experienced a lot of difficulties with them, and I walked away from them. I was finding if you do seven tests of the same sample, you get insanely different results. Like not, not okay. Actually, in one of my talks, I used one of Ben's pictures of his tests when he did it. And it was like, if it was alkalinity, I think it was alkalinity we looked at. It went anywhere from, you know, seven to 12. I mean, it was, it was not a small amount <laughs> um, I, I used to have a, a client that would have me document every time i'm mean, not everyone's this much of a stickler but have me document every time this was years ago and it was the first time that i caught the hannah checkers slipping because i would always test you know test all the stuff in his the phosphate and then one time i think i screwed up and i tested it again it was the you know this was a good six years ago but i i was like wait a minute and I think I tested it 10 times in a row and it was just yeah. all over the page. And it was so bad. I'm like, why am I doing this? Because I'm always doing... <laughs> I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple of years, Ben. Hey, Ben, you know what we talk about in this show? What do we talk about? We talk about uh, Polyplab. 
Yeah. He was powering the show, so it works out. And it's funny because we're not sure that this is even going to be a show, but we talked about Polyp Lab just because it came up. Yeah. Uh, we talked about using the Polyp Lab Genesis blocks as a, a substrate for beneficial bacterias and why. So watch the episode. We don't need more of a commercial than that. Yeah, um, no joke. We're happy to be powered by Polyp Lab. We use some of their products, and those are the products we talk about. Um, the Genesis blocks are one. Um, the Reefroids are another. It's part of uh, what I feed to baby corals and, and my regular maintenance of all my systems. The and super uh, the super gluelets. I, I found my uh, box of them. We and did. I love them now. You know, my whole idea of like, I need a lot of glue all the time, so I want the bigger ones. The gluelets are pretty great for a lot of a lot of stuff. So um, Polyp Lab, check them out wherever good products are sold. Because I'm always doing... Okay. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple of years, Ben. So, Rich, pick. I, I would say pick up an API kit or, <laughs> you know, the Tropic Marin kit. Um... They're both fine, and that'll get you the ballpark. Um, now magnesium, I think there's just something wrong. I don't. I don't. I. I but I, I mean, I, like, even with the <laughs> use, <laughs> which I, I couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Uh, I. I am not up on the. Um, on the on the magnesium kits. Um, I get my magnesium numbers from the Apex and from uh, aquarium water testing, which I haven't done in a million years. Because um, I know they don't use, they were doing everything with Hawk. So I know they're doing each individual. I think this is just, it, it testing feels, like, artifact. feels like squarely some testing issues and then some following the numbers rather than looking at what's in the tank. Because I, I think feel, you're right, you know. Yeah. Go ahead, Ben. No, so, no. No, I was oh. just gonna. I was just gonna say. I feel like if your numbers of magnesium were actually doing that, your your tank would be like a piece of chalk. Wow. At one point, that's what it looked like. <laughs> I mean, how does even how does even magnesium? You were saying like daily. I see. I don't think the Hannah. I'm sure I was trying to look at. I was. I was testing daily. Um, but now since I switched over to the Lamont. I wasn't using the test kits as much. And oh, I was trying to find the actual magnesium test kit. Oh, but I guess anyway. here's a question. When you were getting these numbers, were you were you doing an action because of these numbers? Or were you or yeah. were you just holding back and watching the numbers? No, oh, I was doing an action because of them. And then I I stopped when when, sorry, when everything yeah. happened, I was like, holy crap. So, um, so I think there was basically... testing artifacts going on, and your actions were just jerking the tank all over the place. Since and yeah, because since I stopped and just um, dogs going a little nuts. The dog knows. The um, dog's trying to tell you. It's a, <laughs> just doing the water changes every other week. Um, Stabilize consistently on that, and then every yeah. other like on the off week just cleaning the equipment out because it needed it um, has been like the alkalinity has been again, between eight, one and eight, five, eight, six um, calcium stays between four forty and four sixty. Fine. It's just the magnesium. That's all over the place. Yeah. I, I I'm guessing that I, I would get a titration kit or send okay. it to like aquarium water testing or fine. If you have someone local who's got a titration kit, just borrow it. Um, if you yeah, can I'll pick up an API and or, I'll see what it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Now I don't know if the API magnesium kit is worth anything. Um, I just okay. don't know. Um, oh, you, like, yeah, you were talking about the uh, alkalinity, one. the alkalinity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably based on my ass and what I glean from what other people say that the, uh, API is not better, you know, is not as, I can't make the same recommendation, uh, for magnesium. I would go with uh, Tropic Marin, I think. No, I mean, I mean, and, <laughs> I, and I'm just pulling this out of my ass with all the kits that I've used. Like, uh, I mean, maybe Elos or maybe Salifert. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to I wanna say, because Hannah, I don't believe, again, I'm now I'm going by memory because I haven't done it in a while, but I don't think that Hannah has magnesium. Huh. I think it was 
a um, was a Red Sea. Which hand? I could be wrong. Are yeah, you, that, you're that, using like the, the electronic. You know yeah. what Boomer had told me once, which was there, super interesting. It's there like is when a you, Hannah. There is a Hannah magnesium checker. When you have a test right. kit that that gives you a digital readout, you tend to like think that's more accurate. And Boomer was telling me that it's not. It's just if you see a digital readout, your brain is like, oh, that's more accurate, and that's it's not, not the case. I, 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 the, the store near me has got one of those. Um, I think it's the same one you have, the Lamal. Um, yeah. API is, API has it too, but it's still Lamal. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay, great, mm -hmm. great. And I went in there and I, I did my tests at home with my Hannah DR890. And then I went and had them test and it was so different. I had them run it twice and the numbers yeah. were kind of different, but not. I remember the precision seemed mm. fine, but it was so far off from the numbers I was getting that it made me go, ah, I don't think these are these are ready for prime time yet. Um, so, but, but I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. And I'm sorry you've got one. And, and <laughs> you know, and I could be wrong, but but yeah. but I feel but I, I feel this Hannah checkers. I just I, people swear by them, but I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. Um, well, so Richard got me this Misco, and this is not something that I assume that most hobbyists would get because the son of a bitch costs like 500 bucks, but it is, it's yeah. like bar none accurate as hell. So I'm obsessive with calibrating that every single damn day. As a matter of fact, I often calibrate it multiple times in one day, but I'm using it all day long. Yeah. And, and I'm super big on recalibrating your thing to test Selenity. And I found from using that Hannah Selenity thing, first of all, those packets are a buck. And yeah. so if I do that, I'm spending like five to 10 bucks a day just on recalibrating. The thing. But yeah. And on that thing, they tell you that you don't have to recalibrate it. But man, I was using it when I was at the public aquarium and it was never with any of our you know with our with our big probe tester that someone else besides me came through every day or the refracto i had it was just always all over the place and uh i, fi I found that it drifted so it was like i caught it drifting between clients yeah i can't use it um so well, i well then has my beef <laughs> i had yeah i had three of them and i got rid of them um hey, i think i can't... actually oh i'm sorry i think i actually threw them away and I had I, did. I, did. I had a box of such uh, of the packets for the, and it was just like this thing is such a pain in the ass to use if I have to calibrate it every time. Whereas like the desktop um, Milwaukee Salinity yes. or the uh, not the Salinity uh, the conductivity meter or the Misco, you do it with uh, either a, a, a calibration solution or DI. I, actually, you, what I do is. I use uh, DI or distilled water to, to zero it. And then I use a solution that's supposed to be known and double check that against that. Now, the, the, the other thing is you make yourself crazy with all this stuff. Yeah, so that's I what feel, I was doing. I feel very comfortable uh, talking to you about this because <laughs> I spent a bunch of money to, to check this. I mean, the only reason I got the Misco was because it was I was pissed off that all these other things were wrong all the time. Um, but most of the time now I'm back to my VG refractometer. Yeah. VG. I was going to bring that up. Um, most right. of the time I just use that, but I calibrate that every time as well. But, it, but and you calibrate it the same way, yeah. but again, I'm looking for, I'm looking for, it's gotta be between 34 and 35.5, you know, that's, that's the kind of range I want it to be in. So as long as it's close to that, I'm not freaking out. Yeah. Um, but so it's the, you know, the Hannah checker, I, we already talked about that. We used it and I use Ben's picture in a talk and people always tell me they're better more, but better now. And you can calibrate them, but it just feels like it's supposed to make your life easier, but I think it ends up making you a slave to the, to the electronic device rather than using uh -huh. it to get useful numbers. Cause I'm always doing <laughs> okay. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple years, Ben. Hey, guess where good products are sold? Where 
Are good products sold, Benjamin? Saltwateraquarium.com. Yeah, use the link below because that's better for us. Mm -hmm. It lets them know that we sent you. Don't randomly go there. They are such a great clearinghouse for all kinds. Well, they're not really a clearinghouse. They just have everything. If you need it, they've got it. Um, sometimes when I'm just shopping, I'll check Amazon for something. And before I hit buy, I go, I wonder if saltwateraquarium.com has it. Because I'd rather be, you know, and boom, and and 9.75 times out of 10, and you can trust those numbers as much as you can trust uh, ICP test results. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um they're they're great they have the stuff and they send it to you ben talk about it for a little for for 30 seconds or so they have cleanup crew in-house they don't push that off in some other company so they have that in-house and uh go ahead and check them out for all your cleanup crew needs they send you big specimens and each specimen is labeled on the bag so in case you're not sure what you're looking at easily labeled for you and uh, they do have three locations across the United States to ship off your goods to you. That's how they get them to you so fast. Yeah, and 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 they've got all kinds of programs that will benefit you uh, if you're a newer reefer. You can text them about whatever's going on in your tank, and they'll try to help you out. They've got a Facebook form. They've got informational articles and videos. They've got an app that makes your ordering mobile easier. A, a mobile app. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry. There's a stationary app. Is that it's a thing? Not, yeah, they have a stationary app. It doesn't move. <laughs> Whatever. It's the, it's the vermeted snail of apps. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we Ben and I both used uh, Saltwater Aquarium uh, forever. We're thrilled to have them as a sponsor. Um, uh, when you order from them, use the link below or in the comments right at Reef Beef sent you. That way they know that... Uh, that them sponsoring us is worth something. So uh, mm -hmm. um, we love them. Go check them out. Saltwateraquarium.com. Because I'm always uh. Good. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple years, Ben. I feel like this is a classic case of the testing something and then doing an action. And it's and it's truly your action that screwed up the tank. Oh, well, hands down. That's a classic deal. How long have you been reefing? Two um days. yeah two days about Three two, thousand years. two and a half years yeah all right two years well, two you know years. The, the 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 worst thing about our hobby and our industry is that testing <laughs> well is that stuff products are presented as these things work yeah they yeah yeah kind of work and so it takes going through and you know Ooh. no matter how much you read about it or or Listen to people like us talk about it or people who are, are better than us talk about it. You, you're not, I don't think you're really going to get it until you, something like this happens to you. Because you, you because yeah. you, 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 I, I at, was, uh, at two years, you don't have the, the, um, the, the, the confidence to go, this is wrong, but these numbers are telling me it's okay. So I'm going to keep doing what the numbers tell me. Um, so that, that I'm and I, sorry, exactly I what I did. You. Yeah. Rich, you, know, you need exactly a, you need a tattoo. Yeah. S A F skeptical as fuck. That's just normal life, man. I don't need a tattoo of that. Yeah. You're supposed um, to be with not cynical, industry. not cynical, but skeptical. And in this industry, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just cause everyone says the hand is great. I don't no. know. And, you know, I don't want to be an asshole, but, you know, from my daily experiences with stuff like that, it's just like, I mean, half of the shit that you see, like, say, on Instagram to drive your choices, you know, it's really people like branding shit so they can be part of the in crowd. I mean, maybe oh, yeah. that's cutting yeah. deep to the bone, but. At the same time, there's a lot of people who seem to have plenty of success with those devices. And so what it comes down to is testing is. uh uh, uh um a snapshot of a trends trend hmm. and that's all it is and if you're trying to tweak your numbers based on testing to specific ranges you're gonna get you're gonna get in trouble um and when you see something like you do you know something's really wrong and uh, you know the answer for me is i need to test this with things i know 
are going to give me decent results I can believe in. Uh, you know, meh. Um, and going from a, 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 an inexpensive um, electronic tester to another inexpensive electronic tester doesn't give me much confidence that that's a good um, a good way to double check your results. Well, no, I was just going to say the reason why I went with Lamont was because of the LFS. And I'm like, the LFS is using this. And he's putting all, you know, how many tanks is he testing a day with this stuff? You know, there's got to be some merit to it. Then wow. you look at the company and the companies, you know, they're a chemical testing company. I mean, they, they test their, oh. their products are used for like the city sewers. And I mean, yeah, they're major stuff. Board. Yeah. So it was like, all right. I mean, it's not, this isn't just some, you know, this, you would think they know what the heck they're doing. Now, now yeah. Ross, Richard Ross. I remember from working at the wow. zoo, I remember them telling me that like magnesium is tricky. Now we used Hawk. We used something called a digital titrator that thing yeah. you click and it kept yeah. track of the numbers for you. And I'm trying to remember correctly because it was something like we would have to test calcium first, then test magnesium, and then you'd subtract the number. And it was like a very, it was Hawk and it was a very accurate way to do that. So I yeah, mean, there well, could be was, some... Uh, but it also depends on where you're looking at the color change. Where does where does that happen? And and how much of a color change are you deciding yes. is enough? Um, and I think they say there's a flash and then there's right. an actual change. Um, and like I say, I, I go by the actual change because my eye colors, my color perception is not good. Um, but again, I don't actually care. I just want it to be trended with what's looking healthy in that range. Uh, yeah. That said, magnesium tests are, are like wildly inaccurate. Like it's not, we we you know if you get a crazy one, it's it, it could be 150 ppm off easily. Um, but it's such a big number, and it's and as far as I've ever been told, it's it's a, such a number that moves slowly. Yeah, I mean, I think you can think of magnesium as like piloting like a like a, a, a like a big freight liner ship like you turn and then a minute later the son of a bitch moves how how yes uh how long after dosing magnesium would you test would it be like days before a day before or? how would i add magnesium if it was low so if you if you thought it was low and you were adding magnesium when did you test a second time the next day the next day okay next so day. It, it can't it's not a flash in it's 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 not like Could the it magnesium be from precipitation. Was... It, Could it be it... leftover or whatever? I'd want to ask Craig that. I think you need a lot, and th and then you fed it all of that caulk. <laughs> yeah, would the precipitation like draw down all of that? Like, just... yeah, it, yeah, precipitation event could make everything fall out of solution. That's that's what it like does. Hardcore, yeah. Um, a problem with even even if the 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 spin touch you're using is by yeah. a, a reputable company there's two things one it's it's there it is a consumer product it's not a professional product right mm -hmm. i don't think you find that thing in labs not um why it's like an intermediate product yeah and then the second thing is it does multiple things at the same time and it costs 800 bucks you know you know, we we spent fifty thousand dollars on a guardian machine at the academy, and um, that took so much dialing in uh, before gotcha. we were even confident about it. Um, that you know, something for eight hundred bucks like that just makes me go. Meh. That does it all at the same time. If it was like, yeah, you know, the 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 hawk I have or a desktop machine, you run one thing and then you say, okay, now we're testing this. Now, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong. You, you know, did you clean the disc? Did you make sure that was super clean? Does So does it come, it comes with a disc and then you add reagents to the disc or it comes with the disc and you peel the thing off and just drop it in with your sample? Yes, you, you peel and then them you, off. And then you just add your water to it? Yep. Okay. Well, yes, you add your water with the... Uh, the syringe that they provide okay into the hole and it just goes right yeah in. you know that 
the the wacky number, you know, that could all, that could also be from you know, some kind of interference that you didn't realize was happening. You know, it could have been from you know, I don't know, magnesium on your fingers or or you know, some, you know, something polluted. I'm just I'm I'm reaching for straws right now. Um, it's all right. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out another reason why it would be jumping like that. Or it could be a problem with the, you know, Ben, Ben likes to, you know, touch himself a lot over the Misco. Um, but uh, he did have one that went bad. Yeah, right off the bat. And and we had to send it back. So I don't even trust the Misco. So, so okay, so what am I getting at? What do Dude, I like? Thing is a champ. I like to have, but I don't trust anything anymore. Uh, what I what I do is is everything. You're so okay? skeptical. Your brain fell out, Richard. Does everything? No, no, that's cynical. Um, does everything look okay? Great. What are my trends showing me? Okay, I'll slowly, you know. So I'm riding. I'm surfing it the whole time. I'm surfing the wave of the trends. If you know things are looking down, I tweak so it's going up. And there's no set or forget it. And what I mean by that is, like, I will tweak. I will turn my ATO off for a few days to let my salinity climb a little bit and then I'll add more salt water and turn the ATO back on the auto top off. Right. Yeah. Or okay. if I'm worried about magnesium, I'll add a little bit and then I won't, then I'll t look at it again in three or four days. Um, you know, so I'm just kind of, I'm tweaking at it a little bit often. Um, and just kind I'm of, if, as long as everything looks okay, I'm not going to make any big changes based on numbers on a machine. I'm with um, Rich on this, and this is going to sound a little crazy and unorthodox, but, you know, and mine is different because, you know, I'm servicing clients, but I tend towards, um, what's a good word for this? Like purposeful stupid. laziness? No, purposeful oh laziness. The, the right kind of lazy? Because sometimes, you know, I would check something and go, that seems off. And I look at the tank, tank looks good. And so then my thing is, I'm going to let it ride. Yeah, I think you just watched my talk. I think I just, I live your talk. <laughs> um, uh, that's no, how I, I am. And that's how most, at, at a certain point, most reef keepers do that. But I, that's like 15, 20 years. You just start going, it takes, you have to go through what you did a couple of times <laughs> to go, I actually trust myself now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, for sure. Chasing these numbers, I don't care. And what I just realized, this is a new realization for me, is I like a high-tech result, and then I like the lowest of the low-tech result, right? So whatever the Apex stuff is doing, that's all just trending. Great. Whatever. The numbers are, are they're not bouncing around too much. I'm not going to freak out. The salinity bounces a lot. I'll go check that because... We know the salinity, the conductivity probes are can get can get weird, um, but then when I'm testing, like if I want to check salinity, I'm I will often use the Misco and the refractometer, and that way I know that they're kind of close enough for me, um, and uh, often I'll just use the refractometer, and then once in a while, you know, if I'm doing a spot check, if it's like yeah. oh. Oh, the, 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 you know, one of my conductivity probes dropped. I'll grab the refractometer and do quick comparisons through, because there's different salinities, because my system is stupid. Um, but I'll, I'll, so, so that gives me a range of, is it me or if it's wrong? And often I will test like three times and not even look at the first three tests, then wipe it off, then test it again. So I know it's super clean. But, but when I do, Real testing, when I care about testing, I will, um, you know, I'll do the testing. So then I'll pull out the MISCO and I'll pull out the refractometer and I'll do the, um, I'll, I'll do the, the calibration solution. Not, not, not the DI, but the actual 35 okay. parts per thousand. And I don't even trust those anymore. Because if you buy two <laughs> bottles from different companies and you test them, you get different results, and then you just need to kill yourself. Right? Okay, so basically, you can't you can't test any you can't trust anything with anyone. You can't really trust anything. You need to have a blue thumb, uh, and then you need to look at these things uh, as 
information about trends rather than specific numbers. And, and the action is the dangerous part. Right. I found that out. Yeah. And I like the high... I'm, I'm going to just say this again for me. Uh, the high-tech version and the low-tech version. It's what I'm doing with the API. The API is like the lowest-tech version. <laughs> um, and, and But but it's kind of bulletproof. Uh, I'm sorry. Or the Tropic Marin. Um, <laughs> they're kind of bulletproof titrations. Uh, and, 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 you know, your, your VG refractometer, if you haven't dropped it, or dumped water in it, it's pretty bulletproof. Um, and then a high tech version for trending or an even higher tech version for, I, I actually want a good snapshot of this. So the, you know, I got the DR890 because I wanted to test phosphate and I wanted to test nitrate. And I talked to Bingman because you can talk Bingman. to Bingman. Yeah. And he goes, what are you actually doing? And it's like, I really want to check what the numbers are. I want to see if the lanthanum is having an effect. I want to see if the algae is having an effect. And he said, well, then you need something better than hobby grade stuff and uh, go for the DR890. But that's that's all I use it for. It does a million things. All I use it for is phosphate and nitrate. Because the rest of the stuff, when we were talking about this the other day, you got a test result how do you know it's actionable, right? That's the question we're all asking. That's really the thing yeah. to ask. It's the and, action and, that makes or break you. And the only, right, yes, Ben is correct. Mark it down, I said it. No, no, I, I <laughs> one, uh, Ben, one. If, if, I, if, if I disagreed with Ben, I wouldn't have a show with him. Cause I'm always going, uh. okay. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple years, Ben. Hey, so you're watching this show, Beefers. One of the reasons, one of the things we're trying to do is get more content like this. And the best content like this comes from beefers. So um, one of the levels we have on uh, our membership at uh, refeedpodcast.com slash membership is you get time with us once a quarter to talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. And, um, and then we ask you, is it okay if we put it on the show? Because we think it makes great content. So I think you'll watch this show and you'll go, oh, this is really cool because we're sleuthing in real time with somebody and we'll get them back. So um, if you got, if you want to do that, we'd love to have you do that. Currently, it's part of the membership. Uh, but if you got questions, you know, get them to us uh, through Reef Beef and we'll, we'll try to answer them. We, we're, we just recorded with Rich and we're very excited because it was fun and it feels to us like it's useful. So let us know if it's useful. And, you know, thank you, Beefers. Thank you, Rich, for, uh, for throwing some jingle our way so we can keep doing the show and provide you content like this. We're excited. And thank you. Share the stuff around. We love you, Beefers. We really do. Thank you so much. Because I'm always doing... Okay. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple years, Ben. The only thing that's going to tell you what's really actionable is do you see something going on that that's off? If you don't see something that's going on that's off, your tweaks should be tiny over time. Well, that's the, my the deal, big... too. Like test result. It's weird. <laughs> Look at the tank. Tank looks good. Fuck the test result. You know? <laughs> well, the white tank was the, was a big giveaway for me. Yeah. Yeah. I was having this discussion with aquabiomics people. Well, not people who are fans of aquabiomics. And and so we saw some people come back uh, with aquabiomics that showed 0.047% um, that they had crypto in their tank, that they had ick in their tank. And I was like, how is, is that actionable? Should, should, you, should you pull out all your fish and make your tank go phallid? Fallid? That's not a word. Go Fallid. fallow. 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 and fallow. For <laughs> should you do that for 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 a, for less than one percent? I I I don't know. Well, and I mean, Rich, don't you? I wouldn't Nick, do anything. Do, but but, think... but but I'm sorry. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, but no. if I if and and then somebody came back and they said, uh, oh, and then somebody did it for your anemia, and then they sent back a second test and it was clear after they did. Um, what do they do? Hydrogen peroxide mm -hmm. <clears throat> for six weeks. And then they had no uranemia. And so my first question would have been, <clears throat> could you have just left it and the uranemia would have been gone from the test, you know, as well. But they said, 
I was having mystery fish deaths. And it's like, okay, so now you've got two things. You've, you've got something that's happening in real life that correlates to a test result, possibly. So then action makes some kind of sense. Hmm. But if your fish are fine and you get a even a 1% eDNA of crypto in your tank, why are you going to do anything that could risk your whole tank? So well, yeah, you you're, need, you're, you're acting off of numbers and not something you're actually seeing. Yeah, you need, yeah. Is there something to see that correlates, uh, that, that could, is there something bad happening in the tank that this water test being whatever it is could explain? And don't even get me started on ICP testing. I don't even know yeah, what to do with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> because it's so super popular. Yeah, Sanjay's got a new guy he's using that Chris, I guess, from ACI is using. And Sanjay's going to send some tests out. So I'm going to wait to see what happens when it comes back. You know, every, every, every fucking ICP person now, they say, you know, you know, They're I'm a PhD. The right way. I'm a PhD and I'm a chemist. And it's like, ah, well, the one that's I was just using. Saying. That's what the first one said. The one, oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, oh, but Sanjay actually talked to this guy. But, but then I actually, you know, the 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 api whichever one i was using so many red flags to me that i won't be using them again so that's me babbling about a bunch of shit <laughs> so it's tough at two years it's tough because you want to believe it all and you don't have the well, experience this, under your belt but now you've got some serious experience yeah well this tank's only been up a year and two months yeah so yeah i mean it looks totally fine on. The fish look fine. Fish um, are good. They're great. A couple of assholes in there. Yeah. But you have a that. blue throat? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And that, the uh, when we looked at it closely, the rocks aren't white, right? The, that's just being blown out no, by the that's just Yeah, okay. There we go. And there's a scopus? Yeah. There's a scopus in there. I got... Uh, let's see if I can bring this. Some swampinus? Antheus? Yeah, there's a couple of antheus in there. What's a green coral on the... Down here? Well, it's up on the rocks. Oh, they're all leathers. It's the only oh, thing okay. that seems to be doing right now is leathers. I put in a money on the end over here. Hard to piss off a leather. When did you put that money in and how's it doing? Money's been in about a week. Um, seems a little pale. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything else is just softies. Yeah. So I would recommend at this point... Um, Doing what we've already discussed. I won't go over that again because yeah. I'm trying not to repeat myself like I sometimes do. I can cut that light out. Uh, and then I would uh, – I think the water changes are a great idea. I think that's never a bad idea. And then I would, you know, be adding, um, you know, captive grown fragments of stuff semi-regularly yeah. and seeing how they're going to do over the next couple, three months. So, so you, when was the precipitation event? When did that actually happen? About four months ago. Okay. So you're probably coming out the other side of it now. And it's uh, like I said, every, since then, it's about every other week, water changes, uh, except for about two weeks ago. I had, well, anyway, but usually about every two weeks, just doing about 30 gallons, 35 gallons. About how, 30 big gallons. Is, how big is the tank? Tank's 180. And then the, um, the sump holds about another 70. And then yeah. take rock out of it. So you're about 210, 220. Those are pretty water. big water changes, but I, I like it. I'm a water <laughs> change fan. I was going to say those are pretty small water changes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but every every other week? Yeah. It's every every other week. week, but it's not. Uh, I'd have to bring up the calculator. Would it be a let's pain in the ass let's, to cut that down do and do it once a week? It's a pain in the ass. So okay. it's a 100, 180 gallon tank? Yeah. And then you got. Uh, about 70, 70, 75 gallons in the sump. Okay, so we'll go with 250 total gallonage. That's fine. And you're doing a 30 gallon water change every yeah. two weeks. And it, oh, the other thing is so I forgot about this. In the, I don't know if you can be able to see this. Let me take this out. All right, I don't know if you can you see, see this? Uh, the sump? Yeah, the once little you. Balls. They're all solid rock. Everything in here is one yeah. clump. Calcified together. 
What is it? Is that yep. bio balls? Yeah. Break them up. All one big rock. Now. Break them up and and and, and, it. and take them out. I would I would break them out, take them out. I would acid wash them, get all the calcium off of them, and put them back. Or you know, do it in chunks so you're not changing at all. But that one lump is not going to help you. Um, yeah, it's just there's <laughs> one, two, there's four baskets of them, and they're all yeah. one big rock. <clears throat> you're going to have to up. get brave and use uh, ten percent muriatic acid. Use oh, you I. Just you can just you can also just stick them in vinegar for that's uh, true or citric acid either one yeah. citric oh, acid is cheaper i just got to get them out of there right you got to chip them up <laughs> do one do one at a time it might not be an issue but i don't know you know i, I don't know i don't, I don't, I don't like material? bio balls anyway you got enough live rock in that system what material know. is that it almost looked like a eheim f substrate pro this is fun that looks like Eheim FS Substrate Pro. Is it just like a like a yeah? You can blow through it. It's like a like a little ceramic dust glued together. Yeah, pretty much. Is that is it? Are they Eheim? Do you know? I think there's some Eheim, and then some of them are just something. The ones that came with the uh, the sump itself, like almost it's a Ciparax type situation. Um, and here's another thing: as long too. as that material is not too expensive, since you turn that into a block buy some more of it put it in a bag put it in the sump mm -hmm. wait a couple weeks then fuck with that old stuff or throw it away yeah i'll just throw it away i don't even but, know if but you need before it. you throw it away get the new substrate in the system a good i don't know two to three weeks and then jack with that other stuff that's the i don't know why why even use it that's the substrate pro right yeah 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 f a substrate pro yeah and that's good for salt or fresh it's got to be yeah it's just I, I, inert ceramic i'm reading a german newspaper yeah uh, <laughs> watch out for like fecal porn yeah i don't know i i i would been a fan of that kind of stuff i do like the the new um the polyp lab blocks yeah uh because they seem very dense and solid and not breakable and um they seem to have a lot of surface area but who knows uh, uh, Mazara, Mazara. Um, oh, you, the same people that make Max Spec, they make like a bio ball that's hard. Because I know what Rich is getting at. Because I've also used those marine bio pure blocks, but it's like I've weird when they get old. You can touch them, and it's like an Egyptian sarcophagus. Like your finger goes right through it. Yeah, because you got know two of those in there too. Yeah, they get real brittle and crazy. I don't. Um, yes. You know, I, I, I. If you would have talked to me three years ago i would have said just get rid of that you don't need any of that biomedia that's just that's just sitting there doing not I mean, much yeah, especially can... especially in the sump because it's far away from where the action is yeah right so you're the the food breaking down is happening in your tank and the um um, um proximity is important for bacteria to be able to deal with it I mean, I think, okay. you know, once you consider all your rock and all your sand, and then I see that you have great circulation, I mean, what else is left after that? Yeah, if, I would. If, if ammonia is going into your sump, I mean, first of all, how is that happening? Or well, nitrite, right? Um, I, 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 if it were me, I would likely uh, take it out and I'd put some other live rock down in there okay. as a live rock farm more for if I needed it or, you know, if you if you see a pest on a piece of rock, just yank the piece of rock and put a different piece of rock in. Um, I don't I don't love live rock down in the filtration, and 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 I remembered either. I remembered those modular sumps, but I'd never worked with one. But the, the problem I have is because you know where you have your skimmer in there and just all sorts of shit, whether it's live or not live, comes off the rock and. Man, as someone that works on all these people's tanks, is like all that shit makes its way into the needle wheel and pillar of your skimmer, and that annoys the hell out of oh, me. Put it downstream. Oh, uh, okay, okay, fair enough. That's what that's what I yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, and, and I was gonna say nowadays, I because these tanks are not, I'm not plumbing tanks into my system with huge turnover to the sump anymore. Um, so I've started putting the Genesis rock in the, the individual tanks yeah. um to give additional um denitrification sub uh, surfaces because they're not getting the benefit of the whole system because the turnover isn't huge 
Yeah, I just, I just wanted to clear up why I why I've changed my mind. And then I toss some, and uh, just be, have to be honest, I did put four of them in my sump, and that was at the same time I also started to see a drop in nitrates, but it also at the same time the cheto was going crazy. And that seemed to be a drop in nitrates. And I up my water changes. So <laughs> correlation, causation. There's it's you've gotta you've gotta be the decider who feels what's going on in the system. But and then, then decides. Yeah, then you go onto a forum and type, 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 type and tell people, these blocks cured all my nitrate. You know, but you dig in deeper and it's like, dude, I, you don't have anything conclusive there. You have a what, roller mat. What were you gonna show yeah. us? You're going to show us the roller mat? No, I was just going to do where you were talking about putting it into the one, you know, the chambers and stuff. It's just clarity on one side. But that's there's two drains, but only one drain goes to the clarity. Oh, there's my little puppy. Hello, puppy. Yeah, you know, I'm sure if you've listened to us, you, you know our opinions about mechanical filtration, um, which is we don't like it. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is awesome, Rich, because it's 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 great to talk to somebody who's been in the hobby for two years, and I look and I I look at your sump and how it's set up and everything. And it's like, yes, that is what a store would sell you. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> that I hate is to say it too, but that's that's damn right. And and, <laughs> and I and I can't blame a store for that, <laughs> but that's but I would immediately go on. get rid of the roller mat, get rid of the. The, the stuff in, you know, the, 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 the bio. I media. say for sure, get rid of the bio, but I would also say do it carefully and slowly. As we all know, you make any change, right? You know, I would never tell you, yank the bio out. I mean, but you don't take half of it out, wait a month and take the other half out. You don't have to do any of that. I think, I think you, I wouldn't do anything except for what we've already talked about. I wouldn't be moving yeah. slowly. Just yeah. let the tank be, um, double check your tests. Um, and, Cautious and, and, laziness. What was, and what let it let it, it relax, and then uh, hopefully we'll talk to you again in a little while, and we'll see how it's going. See, um, this good. is what I love, Rich, because because it's so funny. Because when you know you'd go to ten stores, this is a classic thing. You go to ten different stores, and they're going to tell you twenty different ways to get out of here. Now, a lot of their solutions are going to be some fucking bottle that they have on the counter. Of course, it's some shit that they can sell you. The funny thing is I find your situation is you not fucking spending money and you not doing a whole hell of a lot besides the water changes. Yeah. It's not making, Thanks. I'm not trying to shit on stores, but I'm just saying I'm a product of stores. You know, I so went, when I had this whole science, when I went, this whole thing started, I went to three different stores. I got three different possibilities with possible solutions and there I am. I, I tell you one thing, you go to a store, you tell them your problem and, the, and they tell you what we've told you. Hey, don't do much. Don't buy anything. Just, you know, go status quo. I would probably keep talking to those people because nine times out of 10, I'm behind a counter. You come into a store and I got this problem. Oh, I had this bottle right here. This bottle solves your problem. Oh, I got this. Okay. That's this bottle right here. You need two roller mats. Yeah. Where, where are you located, Rich? I'm in North Carolina, in the Raleigh area. Okay. I don't know anything about the stores there, so I can't tell you anything. All of them um, are great. I'm not going to lie. You know, they're all good. It's just the reaction. Get, it's just different, you know. Yeah, every, everyone's got a different recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and our recipe is don't have a fucking recipe. Um, but, <laughs> but, you can't, but you need a recipe to start. So I think, I think you are – I'm sorry that you had all of this annoyance – um um that's awful nobody wants that uh, um it it will i think you're on the road to being a great reefer your experiences oh, you. are going to be uh, on a paved road of bones that as a matter of fact what you've experienced here this is a notch on your belt well appreciate it yeah a lot of skeletons yeah we, uh, we all... dude you don't look in rich and mine's closet no we'll <laughs> show you we'll show you <laughs> I, I found a bucket of dead acros from something that happened, an old bucket. Um, and it may have been whatever, but I was like, woohoo, calcium reactor. I was all excited. <laughs> all right, Rich. Thank right. you. I, I, I will let you go. Um, 
thank you for the support and thank you for this. I agree. Um, thank you. We really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. And Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, right man. On. That was cool. That was really fucking cool. And that, and that was very like, what's the word? Poignant. It's like case in point. Where, dude, because Rich, you know, it's funny because I mean, these are my experiences because I talk to people like him every damn day and you see these things. It's like case in point when you and I say, like, don't react to the numbers or be careful. The reaction case in point. Yeah. No, this is the benefit. I, I think I've always thought that we we reefers need to hear from reefers. Right. That's why forms are so filled with people. Mm -hmm. Right. And we brought Aaron on because he's a reefer, right? So we talked with him for an hour and that's great. And I think that's what's so, that's useful. It's, it's, but we're talking about somebody's actual experiences yeah. rather than, you Just know, out of the ether. we're pontificating about what's happened to us in the past. and Hypothetical um, and theoretical. Yes. Yeah. So I love this and I think this is a useful show and I'm thrilled that we can have beefers on to talk about this kind of shit. I, I'd like more of this. I think this is yeah. more of what people would want to hear. Well, um, you know, it's cool too if they're beefers and then like if we're lucky enough that we improve their situation, how fucking cool is that? Yeah, well, that's why I want them to get back to us, right? Yeah. I like thing. talking to people who ask us to think. You know, what's funny is this is sort of what I do most of the time. Oh, yeah. This, yeah, is, this is better than a form. This is like if we had our own form. No, it's weird because you can like visually see and then you can take cues off of people's faces. I mean, because a lot of that form shit ends up in arguments because someone thinks someone said something when they. Yeah. Didn't. Yeah. And so I a bad way thrilled. of communicating. I can't wait to hear from the beefers what we left out. Yeah. You know, we didn't talk about what causes precipitation. We didn't talk about what causes sand bed clumping. We didn't oh, talk about any of that. But you know why? Because who gives a fuck? Yeah, when we can make more shows. Find some article about that right now and go learn it yourself. You'll be a better beefer. Yeah. Beefer, 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 beefer. So check it out. Here's the here's the the guy who made this one. This is the um, it comes in two parts. It's the uh, it's the anemone guards for wave pumps. Yeah. So I have these and they're fine, but those holes are a little small for me. And as Coraline builds up, it, it yeah. impacts the flow. And Clogs so I got a hold of him and he was nice enough. Let me use the same part so it looks the same. He was nice enough to make me one. Oh, with bigger uh, holes. And then he just sent me the STL so I could print it. And I am, I'm pretty sure I am not worried about anemones getting sucked through that hole. Nah. But that will never clog. You know what? And if they do, then they deserved it. Yeah, fuck those anemones. Stupid ass anemones. So that's what I'm, and then here's shoes with us on it. Yeah. I haven't even worn mine yet. Me neither. I'm, I'm going to just... wear them. I'm going to wear them to the show next week. That's what I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you look so majestic, like a, a heavenly glow behind you. <laughs> Is that like heaven right there? Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, Never mind. It's heaven and hell. It's Damn. both. The way it always is. <laughs> Fuck you, heaven. So with the for the alkalinity, I would grab an API kit. Okay. Dude, it's just, it's let me just argue a... with Rich here. And I was going to make this a beef of another show. <laughs> Richard, I got that kit. That thing sucks. <laughs> I would, uh, I'll finish my statement then. Okay. <laughs> Jackass. I would get the API kit because it's inexpensive and it gives you a resolution of one DKH. Yeah. Okay. I don't find any real reason to need resolution of more than one dkh Me neither. you're just looking for a ballpark um and yeah. i think the api kit it's the straight titration it's kind of bulletproof but it's not going to give you the resolution of that that other things are going to give you but i i don't really trust that resolution 
I just want to know it's between eight and nine, right? And then my tester, the automatic tester, says it's eight point five, and okay, we're close. Yeah. Fine. It says eight point seven. I know we're between eight and nine. I don't actually care about that bit of difference. Um, is that not your experience with that kit, Ben? Okay, so I love the Tropic Marin. The no, colored... no, answer my question. <laughs> that what? What's your problem with the API kit? So it's a skinny test tube. So every every drop you do, you have to put the cap back on and do. Oh my God! Use no, a the... different. Your problem is the test tube. Use but a that's different. That's what they give you. Fuck them. Use that's a what different they give you. test tube. I don't use, use that. Use a completely different fucking kit. The other no, thing is why? the API goes from what blue to like yellow. Yeah. And so the Tropic Marin goes from uh blue to red. It's more it's a more crisp. That might be a Dude, colorblind thing. You're just that's just silly. And it's, it's a fat <laughs> little tube and I don't have to twist it. Dude, it's just okay. I, I know you've only been doing this for like a couple of years, Ben. But <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. A couple thousand. <laughs> Tropic Marin alkalinity kit but i will say that rich is the one that converted me over to not giving a shit about the point blah 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 is it, because is it it, i'm sorry i interrupted go on you were no, saying i interrupted awesome you I so turnabout is fair play go ahead um the tropic marin kit is it one solution or is it two no it's one and that's okay, why so i love the, it same thing like the api it's the same exact reagent except with a different color so it's the same fucking thing <laughs> and ben if you're using the fucking vials that come with those kits, you're just an idiot. But I'm saying fuck the kit because that's what it comes with. Dude, who cares? Get yourself something decent. I use, I like these Sarah ones. They're glass, so not everyone likes them, but I do. I and, love glass. Um, you can clean it nice, and it's big and it's wide. I can't. I can't believe your complaint against something is you don't like the. You know that thing could probably contain my tears as oh I my cry God. about you. But yeah, I mean, but there's such a. I can't believe, Ben. Oh, this file sucks. Toss it, baby. You know what else? I don't ever even measure the vial. I don't even use the. I could use just a fucking glass. It doesn't a shot glass. Yeah. I measure with the syringe. I don't kidding? care about the line on the vial. I care about this line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. So why? Think... What is your problem? Because the Tropic Marin already comes with the proper fucking vial. All right. <laughs> Rich is like, who are you guys talking to? How much is the Tropic Marin kit? Yeah, I, now I'll, I'll put that there because since it's German, <laughs> it's like 15 bucks where the API was like $8. Oh, gosh. It's German, so it costs more. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It's Oh, oh, I, every time I buy this kit, instead of buying one new vial forever, I'm just throwing more. Oh, I hate you so much sometimes. I know. I hate me. So okay. take a number and get in line. Okay. So <laughs> I guess what it really comes down to, I really should adjust my chair when I'm not talking. Um, Cause I'm always, uh, um, 